If you clicked on this video, you're probably here for one of three reasons. You're either looking for inspiration or ideas on how to structure your own resume, or maybe you just know you want to see what my resume looks like, or maybe you just get pleasure in watching me make fun of my old resumes. All are good reasons. I've been working on perfecting my resume over the last five years, but I don't want you to compare your first ever engineering resume to my current resume that I have today after, well, five years of experience. So I decided to dig up my first ever resume so you can have it as reference, something to look at, something to compare to. To be more specific, I'll show you my first ever resume that got me my first internship. The internship was okay, it was pretty low pay, it wasn't the best, but I'll show you how I took the experience from that internship and I added it to create a second resume that got me another internship at a pretty cool tech company that actually paid pretty well. But before I do, if you're new here, my name is Tamer and I'm a recent engineering graduate from the University of Waterloo. Now, starting off with my first resume, I'll say that I have my phone, email, LinkedIn URL, and name all at the top. Then I have this summary section that contains all the bullet points that basically summarize all the engineering experience that I have. As you can tell from my resume, I didn't really have much experience to put on it, but I just tried to make it sound like I do. Like if you were to look at the first bullet point right here, it says 2 plus years experience in design, analysis, and testing of mechanical parts. Now what actually happened was I took a class in high school called uh, called Inventor, and it basically allows you to design stuff with just like a basic CAD software. So when I was making this resume, I was like, well, I took that course 2 years ago, so that's basically 2 years of experience. I'm not saying you should do that, but that's kind of what was going on in my head when I wrote down this bullet point. The third bullet point you see here where I say self-taught knowledge in mechanics, robotics, material science, mechanical design, circuits, Microsoft Office, SolidWorks, and GDNT. I'm not really sure why I wrote self-taught knowledge. I think what I did is I just literally took words from the job description and just threw them into my resume hoping something would work and something would stick. But looking back at this, the way I should explain these skills and not just say self-taught, like no one cares how I learned it, but to show that I actually know these stuff through projects that I've worked on. Then these next two points are honestly quite useless. They're just kind of soft skills that again everyone has. The last bullet point right here where I talk about proficient knowledge in C++ and Robot C, you know, that was actually pretty okay. It's not bad. I should probably just talk a little bit more on how I got that experience though. Next, we have the skill section. I'm not really sure why I have a summary section and a skill section. Like, I'm literally repeating the exact same thing twice. I talk about SOLIDWORKS here, then I talk about it again over here. I talk about GDNT in my summary section and talk about it again in my skill section. Like, it's just too redundant and I'm just wasting space at this point. Also, this personal section, again, is honestly kind of useless. Like, everyone has great communication skills, interpersonal skills. Like, this personal stuff is honestly a waste of space. They care more about technical skills for an engineering job. Also, the languages section is really just useless. Like, you know, if you're applying to an engineering job, they really just care about you being proficient in English. They don't care if you can speak Arabic or French or whatever other languages you can speak. Now, let's have a look at the education section. It actually looks pretty good. There's nothing wrong with it, I guess. Uh, the only one thing I have to talk about is, I don't know why I included my GPA, like, Usually employers don't care about your grade, so I don't really need to have it there, but I guess it doesn't hurt. Next, we have the awards and interest section, which are both really useless and you don't need to have them on your resume. Because unless you win something really incredible as an award, like gold medal at the Olympics or you know maybe going to the moon, these are things you could include, but this is just doesn't really bring your employer any additional value. Also, for the interest section, like I don't really know what was going inside my head. Like, why are my interests so vague? Like traveling, soccer, driving, puzzles, like this really doesn't bring the employer any value and the interests are very generic like usually you put an interest because maybe you and the employer will like bond over it with something unique enough but these are all like super vague and really useless and just wasted space to be honest just imagine a recruiter at like apple or tesla looking at your resume and be like wow this guy loves puzzles we gotta hire him so in general my model for resumes is if it doesn't bring your employer or recruiter any value just take it out so basically in this sidebar right here the only area i should really keep is education everything else is just wasted space Next, let's read the experience section. Now, before getting into it, I wanna address that I had absolutely no technical experience, but I tried to make it sound like I did. I didn't necessarily lie, but I just took the truth and kinda just like twisted it and extrapolated on it to make it look like I have experience. The first experience I have on my resume is working for this student design team at my university called Waterloo Formula Electric. And what I talk about is how I design and refine the battery box for the team which is great and all, but I don't only really talk about how I did it, which is probably why this point isn't really that effective. For example, what software did I use to design it? What material did I use? How thick was that material? Why did I use that material? I should really get into more detail, and it's kind of obvious for why this point wasn't actually very helpful for me on my resume. Also, here when I say adhering to size restrictions, I should really be more specific on, you know, what exactly were those restrictions and how I actually adhered to them and what I accomplished to make sure it stayed within that constraint. Also, with all the work that I did on the team, I failed to mention, like, the outcome of the project. Like, was this battery box actually used or was it just something I did on the side? 
did this design help them save any money? Was it more efficient in any way? I don't talk about the results of this project, which is why, again, it's not very effective. This first experience was honestly just a waste of space just because I had some good experience, but I just failed to properly portray that on my resume. So I just wish I had explained it better. I probably would have gotten even better internships. The next experience on my resume, I titled as UW Mechanical Student Engineer. I don't know why I wrote that. I think I was like taking the assignments from my school and making that sound like a job, which is why I wrote like UW Mechanical Student Engineer as my title. I don't know why I did that. Like, I think what I have is pretty good, but I should really put that in the project section and not keep it as a professional experience. In my first year for one of my classes, we were working on this project called RAF, which stands for Robotic Arm Feeder. And as the name implies, you hit a button and a 3D printed spoon will just come in with food and feed you. And it's a pretty cool project, but I should again not put it in the experience section, but put it in the project section. And it's really good that I talk about kind of how I did it using 3D printing and laser cutting and kind of the softwares I use as well, SolidWorks, AutoCAD. So it's good how I explain how I did it, but again, I failed to mention kind of what the outcome of the results is. Like, was it actually used by someone? Did it actually work? Like, I should have really mentioned that in this part of the resume. All right, the next experience you see here, oh my God, why would I even put that on my resume? This is just bad. <laughs> The reason this experience really upsets me is because it's honestly just a lie. I can't believe you lied. You see, in the summer of 2016, I had an interview with an arcade company in Canada called Pladium. And I actually ended up getting the job offer from that company. But they asked me to start in September 2016, and in that same month was when I was starting like my engineering studies at Waterloo. And I didn't think I'd be able to handle a job and school, so I told them no. But in my head, I'm like, well, getting the interview is kind of like working there for two months, so I just put it as experience which I don't recommend you do. It was such a big lie and I'm not proud of it, but I mean, I guess it worked. It got me my first internship somehow. But if you're thinking about lying on your resume, please don't because you'll get asked questions on your interview that you won't be able to answer. So don't lie. Next up on my resume, I talk about my time being president of this club in my high school called STEM Club. And my attempt with putting this on my resume was to make it look like I have leadership experience, which I thought would impress people looking at my resume. The only issue I have with it though is a lot of these activities are like group activities. So, you know, for example, when I say products, design, and machine include lamps, mouse, and phone cases, that's great, but like, what did I actually do? Did I just like watch someone else design it, or did I help? Like, how did I help? Was I the one designing it as well, or was I just like printing stuff for them? You know what I mean? Also, here in this section where I say demonstrated thorough knowledge of course concepts, like, how did I do it? I realized that in this resume, I barely talk about how I did anything. I just say that I did it and hopefully take my word for it, which is bad. Don't do that. Always talk about how you did the experience that you put on your resume. So please learn from my mistakes and make sure to talk about what you did, how you did it, and the results of what you did in every single bullet point that you have on your resume. The final section of my resume is where I talk about my personal projects. And this is something that I think every engineering student starting out needs to have on the resume, especially if you have absolutely no paid work experience. It shows the interviewer that you're actually interested in engineering and you do more outside of school and outside of your class, which makes you stand out compared to everyone else in your class. For me personally, I worked on a hydraulic arm project and an electric car project, and I really tried to use the softwares and skills that I saw in the job descriptions like SolidWorks, AutoCAD, Inventor, as you can see right here in the project. So, you know, it kind of shows the employer that I have some experience of what they're looking for. Now, looking at this resume from a bigger picture, I'm honestly surprised it got me a job because it was really, really bad. However, the job I got wasn't the greatest, so it makes sense. For that job, I worked for two startups, one from May to June 2017 and one from July to August 2017. And these startups made no money, so for the four months that I worked there, I only made $3,000. So if you think about it, I worked for 40 hours a week for four months or 16 weeks, making $3,000. So if you divide that by 16 weeks and divide that by 40 hours, that's $4.69 an hour, which is even lower than minimum wage. But the cool thing about working for these startups, no matter how low they paid, is that they actually gave me some decent experience I was able to put on my resume to help me get a pretty good second internship. So because my resume afterwards was so much better, I got an internship at a pretty good tech company that I think paid me like 25 or 26 an hour, which is a massive jump from the $5 an hour I was making before. And the experience was also pretty cool. Uh, it was a manufacturing engineering intern role at a company called Ecobee. So if you haven't heard of that company, they basically work on creating smart home thermostats and other smart home products. It's kind of like one of Nest's competitors. So if you've heard of Nest, they just do what Nest does, but they don't make as much money. 
And for anyone that's curious, so here's my second resume that got me my second job at Ecobee. And as you can tell, it's so much better because I, you know, actually have professional work experience now. And I'm actually able to explain the work that I did so much better than I did in my first resume. Like you can see right here, I talk about what I did, how I did it, and the results of what I did. I'll for sure make another video where I talk about this resume in more detail, you know, making fun of it, talking about the good and the bad of it. But one thing I want to bring your attention to is this section right here where I talk about my time as a mechanical design engineer at Waterloo Formula Electric. If we compare this section in this resume and the same section in the past resume, you'll see a massive difference. On my first resume, it's so vague and it doesn't really convey exactly what I did. But on my second resume, I talk about what software I use and I use numbers to explain the result of the project that I worked on. Like as you can see, I explicitly say performed FEA using SOLIDWORKS simulation on joining methods, improving structural stability by 12% and increasing strength of the overall fixture. Now this just, it's just so much better because there's just so much more detail and I love how we use numbers in this section because that's a really good way of showing the outcome and the results of the project that you did. Now this was a quick overview of this resume, but this is really what you should aim to have your resume like when you're applying to jobs. This second one, not the first one. But that's about it for resumes. I really hope this video brought you value. If it did, please make sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.